Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, we got to talk about this. And it's not if, but when for Billy Napier. He is on the hot seat. Now, I don't mean immediately, but I mean it's coming. You can just count on it. And look at uh, Lane Kiffin over there. Oh, yeah, he's just laying in wait <laughs> like an alligator. And also, we're going to talk about the Auburn Tigers. I think they're 2024's dark horse, and we're going to talk about them. But before I get into all this investigating whether or not uh, Billy Napier is going to make it through next year and who the coach is going to be, I might need a little bit of help investigating this. Jim, help me out. This is Jim Rockford. At the tone, leave your name and message. I'll get back to you. Yep, sometimes you got to call the best. There's nobody better. Oh, Jim Rockford. <laughs> so he's going to help me out a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm on my own. So I'm going to tell you a lot about what I think is going to happen in Florida, what should happen. Now, look, I understand if you're a Florida fan and you're watching this, you know I'm not a Florida fan, okay? The Gators have been a thorn in my side for a long time. And really, it's not Billy Napier. He's, you know, he's fine. I don't have any issue with him. It's really been about Steve Spurrier for me because he took a big old steaming dump in our Cheerios multiple times back when we should have been uh, winning national titles and we only won one. We should have won about three. Uh, Peyton Manning struggled down there and it just kind of ticked me off and it's always been in my craw. And then Urban Meyer showed up and that was a lot of fun. But uh, I don't know, they're just my least favorite team. It's just what it boils down to. So if you're a Florida fan and you maybe hate watching this, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a little ray of sunshine at the end of this. And if you'll listen to me through this, you'll understand how this is really the best case scenario for you. If you can get away from the whole, oh, I've got to you know, be all defensive and Billy's our guy and all that. Of course, you're going to hear a lot less of that right now. After two losing seasons, nobody's really defending Napier too much. Uh, but, you know, I, I get where you're coming from and you're thinking, I'm just going to, you know, throw shade on Florida. Yeah, of course I am. But there is a lot of truth in what I'm going to tell you. Now, it boils down to this. Napier's coaching style, or lack thereof, has not suited you very well. You've had two losing seasons in a row. Your special teams are a disaster, total and complete disaster. He should immediately hire a special teams coach. I know he does special teams, I guess. But you lost two games last year primarily because of special teams, maybe more, which would have put you 7-5. and five. You'd be going to a nice bowl game, and Billy wouldn't be on the hot seat, so to speak. It's not hot this second, but it's heating up. And if he keeps losing recruits, which he's been doing, and we're going to talk about that too, it's going to get real hot. Now, he will make it to 2024, in my opinion. But if he doesn't have like a good start, and he doesn't start out winning, and you all schedule is brutal, it's going to get hot real quick because even the Billy supporters are starting to wane and get kind of tired of this. And you got real lucky that Texas A&M didn't hire Lane Kiffin because that's the ideal person for you. First of all, he's a big time punk, just like Steve Spurrier kind of was. Now, look, I actually like Steve Spurrier. I think he's funny as crap. He's a smart aleck like me, but it wasn't funny when <laughs> he was costing us national titles. But I would play golf with the guy in a heartbeat. But anyway, uh, Lane is somebody that really stabbed us in the back. So I, you know, it's not that I want good for him, because he certainly didn't want good for us. But he would be ideal for Florida. He's a big time punk. He's a really good offensive minded coach. He's winning like crazy at Ole Miss. He keeps winning 10, 10 games at Ole Miss. That's awesome. You're going to win 10 games in the West in the SEC. That's. I mean, he's just done a great job. I'm sorry. You know, he screwed up last year because he started flirting with Auburn big time. And don't tell me you didn't do that, Lane. You were a big time flirt. But it screwed up your team's chemistry. Well, you didn't do that this year. You finished 10-2, and two, which is what would have happened last year. Now, you need to hope that nobody, you know, grabs him up in the next little bit. I don't think they will. I think he's reasonably happy there. He's making $9 million a year. But what you need to have happen, and this would be the best thing for you, is – you know, for Billy to crash and burn and then hire Lane Kiffin. Yeah, you'll have to suck it up. To, look, nothing's going to change 2024 anyway. Let's look at your schedule. All right, this is pretty brutal. This is one of the toughest schedules I've seen. They've got Miami. The one easy game is, um, what is this, Sanford and Son? The Sanford and Son Bulldogs. You big dummy. All right, Sanford. Sorry, Sanford. Uh, that's their one easy win. Then they got Texas A&M. The UCF Knights, which is uh, Gus Malzahn, that's no easy win. You walk over, but you're limping back. 
Then you've got us at Tennessee. We're going to be up there with blood in our eye. The Georgia Bulldogs, you lose that game. Old Miss Rebs, you're going to be playing your future uh, coach probably. Then you got to go to Florida State. Good luck with that one. Kentucky owns you, so that'll be tough. LSU Tigers, that'll be tough. At Mississippi State, depending on what happens there with their coach. They've hired a decent coach, but you'll probably win that game. And then at Texas, you'll lose that game. I'm sorry. I don't see a lot of wins there. I'm not seeing it here, Lloyd. <sighs> she must be unlisted. I see another losing season of five and seven. Six and six is your best case scenario, in my opinion, with that schedule. Whoever put that schedule together for you is not very bright. I understand the thought process. We're the Florida Gators. We own the state of Florida. We're going to take out Miami, UCF, and Florida State and just be dominant. The problem is Miami's gotten better, Florida State's really good, and UCF is getting better every day. So that's, that's going to be his undoing. That schedule right there will probably end it. Now he's got – he's fired two coaches. I think he finally hired a coach. But what coach wants to come there as an assistant? You're probably only going to be there a year. So you're going to have to be a huge – it's going to have to be a huge advancement from what, where you are right now as opposed to somebody that's going to do a lateral move because you're just going to move right into being fired. So that, that wouldn't be so good. Now let's look at your recruiting. Right now you've dropped down to number six, which is still pretty darn good. The problem is you're hanging your hat now on a bunch of five stars. You've got three five stars listed in here. I think they only count you for two. One's DJ Lagway. I think he's going to be okay. LJ McCray, he's probably going to flip on you, man. That's a five star you're probably going to lose. He's in a, And he's at Auburn. He's heading to Auburn as a possibility or Florida State. Then Xavier uh, Filsamine is uh, taking a visit to Texas right now, and he's on flip alert as well. So those two guys, if you lose those two guys, you're, so, you're probably number 15 in recruiting. If you lose one, you're out of the top 10. And that's what Billy's been hanging his hat on, and that's what everybody's been counting on. But when you go five and seven and you have a bunch of coaching problems, which he had during the year, like I said, special teams was a huge problem. And he needs an offensive coordinator, but that's neither here nor there. The recruiting is, is – <laughs> It's just not, it's not going to end up as good as you hope. And maybe that's a good thing long term because I just, Napier, I just don't see him making it. Now, let me tell you something. I understand he's a great guy. I understand everybody likes him. He's a super nice person, a uh, good family man, all that. That's perfectly fine. But guess what? That doesn't mean you need to be the head coach of Florida. Plus, understand these, these people out there going, oh, you're being mean to you. He's fabulously wealthy because he got picked up from the Sun Belt. He was successful at the Sun Belt. They took a huge risk going down and getting somebody from another small conference, which is up. It's a huge risk. They did it and agreed to pay him a ton of money, and now he's set for life. There you go. There you go. So don't feel sorry for Billy Napier. He's going to have more money than you can possibly imagine. His entire family is going to be wealthy for the rest of their existence and anybody related to him. So look, he's going to come out of this smelling like a rose either way. But it boils down to this, the pressure's on. And I'm going to show you a little video clip right now of uh, Allie Peak, a peek into the Gators. And she's a very nice person, and she has been very supportive of Billy Napier. But she's about to have had enough, okay? She's, she does not uh, tolerate mediocrity very long, even as nice as she is. And you'll, you'll sense it right here in this video where she's at. And again, she has been one of the biggest supporters. We have to add talent immediately. His job isn't in jeopardy, but he's 11 and 14 since taking over. And unless he goes like eight and four, he's going to be under 500 in three seasons at UF. That is absolutely unacceptable for Gator fans. Right now, Florida's at three losing seasons in a row. That has only ever happened one time in this program's history. Okay once. Let's not make it four. The hard part is Florida plays an incredibly challenging schedule next season. They are going to have lots of young talent still. They have got to do well in the transfer portal if they want to put some wins on the board. Uh, given everything that has happened, I think the floor that Billy Napier can win is seven games. But there's going to be grumblings if he only wins seven games. I All right, I'm going to translate that to you. Uh, seven wins is the minimum. If he has anything less than that, he's gone. Okay. Okay. Six wins is not going to get it done. We're talking about the Florida Gators. Now, I've, I've got to do something here. I, I hate to do it. I got to do something here. I, I, I still can't believe it. I really do, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and Tennessee fans are going to get mad at me for saying this. 
the Florida Gators fan base is fantastic. It is passionate. It's huge. And it is, you know, look, they've won multiple national titles down there. They're not a, they're a big time program. They're not going to tolerate this garbage much longer. They're just not. Florida people, <laughs> they're just, they're not used to this. They're used to being on top, not getting the crap beat out of them. And they're, they're just not going to put up with it much longer. So look, Billy, uh, I, I just don't see him making it. Now, Lane Kiffin would be an ideal fit. You know, like I said, he's a very good coach. I don't care for him personally. But again, I would love to see our Josh Heupel and his offense and Nico going up against Lane Kiffin and his offense at Florida. That would be fan. Are you talking about a game? It would be awesome. And it would take no time for Lane Kiffin to get in that transfer portal. He'd bring in a good quality quarterback or two or three, and they'd be fine very quickly and good. And for the Tennessee fans, I know you don't you want Billy Napier forever. It's not going to be Billy Napier forever. It's just not. So we don't get that. <laughs> They're not going to be terrible for us forever. And we still lost at Dadgum uh, the Swamp, which is – I'm so sick of the Swamp. I really am. Uh, but anyway, that, that's the best-case scenario for you all is, yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice 2024. It's not going to matter anyway. You're not going to be any good either way. Even the biggest supporter of their alley peak is going to tell you that. And I've linked her a video uh, in the description – if you want to, if you want to watch the entire video, and she's doing a great job and picking up a ton of subscribers. By the way, she does she does good work. Now we're going to talk about the Auburn Tigers, who is kind of my dark horse for next year. Now I think we're going to make the playoffs. The Tennessee Vols. I'm thrilled about Nico coming in and all these uh, really good players we've got that have been uh, recruited. Two five stars. We're going to end up in the top ten. But the most important thing is our average is really good, and that's what matters in recruiting. I don't care if somebody's got 27 or 30 recruits. I want to be the guy with 22 or 23 with an average of a nice middle four-star with a couple of five-stars mixed in, which is where we're going to end up. We dropped a couple of notches because we did have a low four-star that decommitted and went to USF, but we're at 91.65, and that's what I care about. That's what's important, and we're above uh, several teams that are ahead of us that are at 90, 90, et cetera. Auburn is doing great. They're slightly ahead of us at 92. Again, that's what I care about. You go up here to these other teams. Uh, we're ahead of Oklahoma, even though they're number eight. We're going to be ahead of Florida because they're going to drop out of the top ten, and this average is going to drop when those two five, one, of, one or both of those two five-stars drop. Miami's at 90 because they, they have a ton of commitments and so on down the road. But as you can see, we're pretty close to Alabama at 92. We're pretty close there, and I'm fine with that. If you're anywhere around 92, you're in good shape. But take a look at Auburn. They've already picked up two five-stars, Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson. They've got a bunch of four-stars. They uh, Jamonte Walker, they, they flipped him from Florida. That's one of the flips from Florida. They've lost four. They've got this Riddick fella. I mean, just on – they've got a bunch of good players coming in. And Hugh Freeze, whether you like him or not, is a darn good coach, and he knows how to win. Look, I'll just tell you how it is. He had Georgia beat at Georgia. I mean, he had him beat. Had Carson Beck not just really – lifted his game up and started playing beautifully along with that impressive tight end they've got, they saved the game. Auburn was going to beat them. And then on top of it, they had Alabama whooped. I mean, they had them whooped, if not for the dumbest defensive coordinator call ever and a muff punt. That uh, rushing two and letting Jalen Milrow sit back there and pick a spot was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why don't you ever call me dumb again? <laughs> what a dumb trick. That just – that right there is – that should have never happened. I've never heard of somebody rushing two in my entire life. And I'm not saying this after the fact. I was screaming at the TV. Why are you – I mean, I was screaming. What are they doing? There's only two. He's going he's gonna to pick a spot. And he did. And, yes, the guy had an offensive pass interference, but it was minor. And nobody was going to see that. The rest were watching the ball just like the rest of us. So, anyway, the Auburn Tigers, man, I'm telling you, they, they, could, they could win nine or ten games next year. I mean, you look at how, how they did. Like I said, they started out pretty good. They won the first couple of three games, got beat by Texas A&M. They had Georgia beat. Then uh, they got beat by LSU and Ole Miss, only by a touchdown by Ole Miss. Beat Mississippi State. Everybody beat Mississippi State and Vanderbilt and Arkansas. Then this was the one hiccup. They got beat by New Mexico State, which is a good team, actually, believe it or not. But that hurt them. But then they, they had Alabama beat, which was just crushing. But here's the thing. They finished 6-6. Six and six. They're going to a bowl game, and they didn't have much. Man, I'm telling you, when, when that uh, Brian Harson left, he didn't leave a whole lot of in the cupboard. 
and Hugh Freeze had to put it together. And he, look, he's going to get a good quarterback. You know, they had to just put it together as best they could with that Michigan State guy. He's not that good. He'll get a good quarterback. Hugh Freeze always has a, a good quarterback. So that's going to get soft. So they're my dark horse for next year. I see them winning nine or ten games. And I see they'll beat Alabama. They just will. Hugh Freeze has made a career out of beating Alabama and beating Nick Saban. He's one of the few that has done it. So um, if you're Auburn out there, you should be feeling pretty darn good about your situation. I've got some Auburn friends, and I told them when they hired Hugh Freeze, they were a little bit concerned about it because who he is. I was like, you may not like him as a person, but you're going to love him as a coach. He's going to win for you. And Alabama picking on you is going to end. And it should have ended this year if not for a – a fluke play, and then another fluke play. Alabama might be on a mission this year, and they just may be, you know, you got to get lucky to win a national title. And they've been lucky a lot, but <laughs> you got to put yourself in that position first too. And uh, this might be their year of just being lucky enough to win. And, and they're, you know, they're still a great team. So we'll see how that plays out. But Auburn, you should be feeling pretty good. And my Tennessee Vols, again, I'm, I feel great about 2024. I think we'll be in the playoff. I think getting Nico back there is going to get us back in the top five in the offense where we belong. We should never be out of the top five. And our defense is, continues to get better. We've got a great recruiting class coming in, two five stars, a wide receiver, and a defensive lineman. And we can run the ball beautifully. We were number two in rushing last year. You get the right quarterback back there. Whew. Well, you saw what Hendon Hooker did. And we've got a guy that's as good or better than Hendon Hooker, the number one player in the country, and Nico. So anyway, Florida, there is a silver lining. I'm giving you a silver lining, whether you like it or not. 12 months from now, when Lane Kiffin's your coach, you're going to thank me that I, that I let you know about this so you'd have something to look forward to. And you'll forget all about these bad years. So there's you a little bit of happiness. So I, I wanted to drop that little bit of happiness on you today. As far as Auburn's concerned, Aub look out, folks. Auburn's coming. That's all I can tell you. And Tennessee, you already know. We're already back. So if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the SEC, my Vols. And, of course, you know, I'm watching you, Michigan, and South Carolina. Got to watch out for South Carolina. They like to collude with Michigan, allegedly. Anyway, if you've not subscribed, it's on your right and my left. Just hit that little button right there. I'd appreciate it. It costs you nothing. and helps you get my videos. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And I found out a lot of this because of Rockford. You know, he always comes in and helps me out from time to time. Now, if it had been something a lot smaller, you know, easier to get, I'd have used Magnum. But um, you got to bring Rockford in when it's something difficult. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.